Hey guys, it's Joe from Smart Home Makers. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to talk about home assistant concepts. So I've got this video where I'm doing a little bit of whiteboarding and I'm going to explain to you some core concepts in home assistant. We'll be talking about devices, entities, services and automations. This video has been extracted out of the free home assistant beginners course that I'm actually working on and building at this time. You can always pre-enroll in that course, link in the description down below. Let's go and let's go into the content. Welcome to the lesson. Today we're gonna to look at home assistant concepts. So here we're gonna take an example. We're gonna look at this motion sensor. So this motion sensor has three type of capabilities. So it obviously can sense, sense motion. It can sense temperature. And it can also sense the level of light in the room. Three very good things. Now, how does Home Assistant actually recognize these? So this whole motion sensor here is a device. So I'll change color here to illustrate that easily to you. And these three capabilities are called entities. So as you can see from one device, you can have multiple entities. In Home Assistant, we normally action things from entities and we read the states of the entities. So the entities are the most important part to actually learn. So we've established what an entity is, but let's look at the entity in a bit more detail. So obviously an entity comes from a device as we've discussed previously, and the entity has three components to it. So it has an ID, so it has an identifier, it has a name, and it also has an icon. And the entity itself actually can have a state And then it can have a series of attributes. So the state would be only one state, whereas the attributes, there could be many attributes. Let's take our example of our motion sensor and let's look at the temperature capability. So our device would be a motion sensor. Our entity would be the temperature. So this entity would have an ID. Now the ID would be something like this. So it would be sensor dot, and then the actual name of the device with underscore temperature. So if our device is called, for example, bedroom underscore sensor, and then it would be underscore temperature. So the first part of the ID, this bit here, sensor is actually called a domain in Home Assistant terminology. And you'll see these domain repeat themselves across different type of entities. The ID, you can customize the ID in, the, in Home Assistant. You can actually change the ID in Home Assistant itself. The name is another name that you can give and this is what it's going to be represented as. Sometimes it's also called as the friendly name. This could be bedroom sensor. In terms of the icon, you could use something like the temperature symbol. So these values don't really change unless you go and change them yourself. What will change is the state and also the attributes. So these are things that you can actually use as part of automations. So the state in this example is gonna be a singular numeric value. For example, where I live, in the UK, it will be 19, it, it, it's 19 degrees. So 19 degrees would be obviously Celsius, and Celsius will be one of our unit of measurements. So we would have a unit of measurement in our attributes. We're also going to have, for example, a battery level. And this is going to be quite useful to find out if for example, it could be 9, 9%. Just to recap, you can only have one value at a time with a state and an attribute here. You can have multiple attributes and they can change, but some attributes are gonna be similar across entities. 
if you're getting value out of this video you want more people to find it then smash that like button and consider subscribing so we just talked about how important it is for home assistant to actually know states of devices and really to be more specific states of entities now how does actually home assistant do it without going into any technical level but just for you to actually understand yourself I'm going to draw this out quite simply. So imagine we have Home Assistant over here, which I'm going to abbreviate with HA. Let's imagine it's this nice little box. And this is where our Home Assistant server is, for example. So I'm just going to put server, right? And then we're going to have our physical device and this is going to be our motion sensor. So there are different, there are several ways that this can actually happen, but the main definition here to take away is that you integrate. So that's why we're going to look at integrations. You integrate devices into Home Assistant. You don't integrate entities, you integrate devices into Home Assistant. And normally the integration can have multiple devices if this is a, for example, a hub. So in my example, this is a Philips Hue motion sensor. So there's actual a, a lot of devices that get integrated at the same time with the same integration. Now also, I'll change up the color here so you can see this better to actually understand the states. So the states will travel from the device back to home assistant. So following the same arrow, we have states and then obviously attributes. So states and attributes change from the motion sensor. So the motion sensor is able to understand if there's a change in temperature, for example, or change in battery level. And then we'll communicate that back into to home assistant. And most of the times you will do that locally. Locally, what I mean, it will do it without going over the internet. But some devices need to go, need to talk to the internet, to a server somewhere in the world, and then that will come back and communicate back to home assistant. And normally home assistant would live in your home. On the contrary, when home assistant needs to send information back to devices, for example, if we had a light bulb. Right, so now we've got a little nice light bulb and this light bulb is going to do a dual communication normally with Home Assistant. So on the way up, it would do the same thing as the motion sensor, so it would communicate the state of the bulb and the attributes of the bulb. So normally a bulb will have an on and off state and the attributes can be, for example, the brightness level, the color temperature and, and so on. On the re reverse, we have home assistant actually sending a message to the bulb. So controlling the bulb. And this happens through services. All right, so a service would actually send a command uh, and a very typical command for lights is light dot turn underscore on and the equivalent is underscore off to turn off and this light part again this is a domain so this should um, it's very similar to the previous example with entities but services are used to actually give commands to the devices and then there will be obviously a return so then the, the bulb will communicate back to home assistant saying yep you know, I'm on or I'm, or, I'm, or I'm off. The services can also accept something called data and the data will be specific uh, attributes that you can set, for example, brightness level. So now we're going to talk about automations briefly. So now that we actually have a bit more of knowledge in terms of entities and devices and services, we can talk about automations and see how actual things can happen. So an automation, in this example, we're going to uh, turn on, turn on a light when we have motion 
and um, let's say, and we have a certain level of darkness. So we could just say and dark. So if we look at this sentence, and if this is our intention of what we want to do, we want Home Assistant to do, we can start breaking down the components and how this actually works. So we have turn on, and this we can say would use a service. So as we, if you remember, we turn on things with services, specifically in this example will be the light dot turn on underscore on service. And the services in automations are part of the actions, right? So the light would be the actual, will be part of actions. And this would be the target of the action. So the target of action, which would be the entity ID. Now we have this when we have motion and dark. So we have two things that are conditional. So we don't want the light to turn on all the times. So we want it only to turn it on in two different, you know, in two different circumstances. Now, one of these conditions, we got to call them the trigger and the other one is going to be called the condition. So the main, how do you know which one is which? So the main actual thing is uh, the motion in, in, in this example. So when we have motion, this will be our trigger. Why is this so? Because in, this makes more logical sense because it, you don't want the light to turn on when it's dark, when there's no motion, but you might want to turn on the light when there's motion, but it's not dark. This is really up to you. But in my example, this is the normal interpretation. So a trigger would be the actual fact that there's been motion and the motion, we would look at something that we call a platform and it would be the platform state. So if you remember from the previous diagram, the state is actually what we're looking from. And, 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 and it's, that's what the thing that tells me if there is motion or not in that moment in time. And we might say from off, to on and this is actually our trigger and we want this to be when it when it goes from off and on right and the dark part will be our condition and this condition basically filters out the automation and it only happens in certain certain time so what will happen now we're going to need to look at the if it's dark and the dark will come from another entity and the same entity would be part of a, the same device. And this would be the, sorry, this would be uh, the light sensor. So it would be still part of the same entity. Sorry, it will be part of the same device, but it will be a different entity. So let me recap. An automation is based on three parts, actions, triggers, and conditions and actions and triggers are compulsory but conditions are not i hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to find out more about my home assistant course it's free and you'll find it in the link down in the description below at courses.leonardo.smarthomemakers if you want to find out more about my free course have a look at the description down in the link below it's courses.leonardo.smarthomemakers.com here i'm going to add a good video that you can actually watch next and see you and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.